the Glass Cannon Network. Hello, and welcome back to Voyagers of the Jump. So, last week uh, you all met a ship's captain, uh, or an acting captain anyway, but we'll get to that. But I just started <laughs> thinking about fictional ship's captains, and I thought maybe we should talk about this. Who, who might be your favorite, or at least favorite today, preferences change, etc. Who is your favorite fictional ship's captain not necessarily space captain any ship is fine any kind of boat uh and i'm not to clarify i'm not asking who you think is the best uh because i think that topic has been adequately covered uh by a recent seth skorkowski youtube video uh, <laughs> <laughs> so just let's just go with favorite and who do you all like oh that's such an evil well, question yeah. <laughs> it's like Matthew, it's, it's like uh, asking often, for it uh, <laughs> I, when so I, I when I, I pose these questions, I'll often direct it at someone specific instead of waiting for the like five seconds of awkward silence until someone reluctantly volunteers to give you the information you asked for. <laughs> exactly. Well, Skid, who is your favorite ship's captain? <laughs> well, I, why me? Well, I, uh, I actually really, really like, uh, well, I like Jack Aubrey um, from the Master and Commander uh, stuff as as just as a ship captain, he's sort of, sort of the prototype, oh, like the prototype that even like Starfleet should uh, aspire to. Uh, I love that movie. Uh, it seems to be getting kind of a, a renaissance lately in people's minds, which is great. But I'm also loving uh, Anson Mount's Christopher Pike in the new Star Trek: Strange New World series. Oh. I think. I think already, like, I think he's vying for the top spot. He's so great. It's such a great character and he's crushing it in his performance. I, I mean, I think like if, if there's a couple more seasons, I think he could very well like top the entire list. Yeah, I was like, why that is that? I mean, like, I agree. I, 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 mean, I, I have similar opinions, but I, I don't, sometimes I'm like, why do I feel this way? I'm not quite sure. And I, it's not just the hair, though. The hair is fantastic. The hair is incredible. It's hands down the best hair, uh, and which is actually kind of a low bar when you consider who he's up against in the Star Trek universe. But I, I think it's like he combines some of the best aspects of Kirk and Picard. He's got sort of the swashbuckling physicality that Kirk has, while he's also he he's also got the thoughtfulness of Picard, mm. and I think he listens to his crew more than i think any of the others like they all they all listen they're all good captains in that respect but none of them do it to the extent uh that he, as thoroughly as he does really um, i think so and like I, one of the things that i love yeah. about that show there's always like the conference scenes where it's just like in next generation they're like sitting in the conference room and yeah. kind of the same thing in original series and what takes that place in strange new worlds is Christopher Pike will make them all a meal. He'll like bring everybody into his big suites of quarters and they'll all make dinner together. And it's like, that's such a great sort of kind of new take on, on that like uh, collaborative dynamic. Uh, and Ooh. I think it's great. I love it. I love it. So I they all make, the, there's oh. no replicator? No, no, it's no. It's Cause it's, yeah, yeah, it's pre, <laughs> it's pre Starship <laughs> Enterprise. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, oh, okay. well, it's, it's pre original it. series. See, now I want yeah. Guy Fieri as a captain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he'd be great, too. Take I do have questions the open town. flame in the captain's quarters. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'd be different if it was a wooden ship, but, but yeah. yeah. Fair. Wait, Fair. Matthew, did this have to be a fictional captain or could it be a real captain? Oh, I mean, are you going to... I'm curious. Is it, think, who, who, who are you going to say? Yeah. I have one. I had to Google because I couldn't remember his name, but I had read about him and was like fascinated by this expedition. But I think historically one of the best captains was Ernest Shackleton. Shackleton? Oh. Yes. Who was the captain of the Endurance, which got stuck in the ice in Antarctica 
for like weeks that his men were stuck in the ice and it was this like insane adventure and they were starving and like hopeless and he was truly a wonderful captain there's like not much written about him that's terrible and like you find out he's a horrible man but he like stuck it out with his men did everything that they did like help them get out of the ice and then he did multiple expeditions after that i think like well into older age he like continued to sail even though it was very dangerous and physicians were like don't keep doing that and he was like i'm the captain and uh, <laughs> I think, me. look at me, <laughs> look at me, <laughs> Easy too. but I think, uh, I think his men like called him boss, which I also love. Like he just had this sort of like nickname, you know, like El Jefe type thing with his men. And he was like very beloved. And I just think back to, um, the, the immense, like the, the immense vastness of the ocean at that time and how horrifying it must have been to be in power on a vessel like that and be the one to like make decisions for a crew of 20 to 30 people and like something horrible happens and it feels like being lost in space. Like it feels like you're in the void and there's no way out. Um, so I respect him as a leader uh, and I would never, ever, ever want to do that. Yikes. Wait, so they did they have to go like full alive or anything like that? <laughs> I don't remember if they like ate each other. There, There's definitely adventures that I've read about like boats being stuck in the ice where they did end up like eating the crew members. I don't think the endurance was one of them. I think okay. eventually the ship was lost. Like they Isn't lost the ship. They left the boat and were like on ice floats and were rescued. I'm pretty sure. Didn't they oh, yeah. just find the ship? Didn't, they, didn't like someone just go? Did they? No, well, it I, might think, have been the I think that's the that terror that you're thinking found. of, yeah. Like right when the show came out, they're like, oh, we just found it. And they're like, spoilers. That <laughs> <laughs> just ruined the show. Spoilers. <laughs> the held off the now it's Great, the I guess they found the ship. Thanks, Matthew. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay, for so spoiling I wrote this down. I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I was going to go with, yeah, just actually I said the video, it would be uh, Captain William Husker Adama uh, from Battlestar, was oh. mine, who wasn't real, but should be. <laughs> <laughs> Battlestar. Uh, the, the original Battlestar? Battlestar, Star, the Battlestar. Yeah. New one being like 20 years ago, but you know, yeah. the, 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 the not Lauren Green, uh, the Edward James almost one. Uh, yeah. um, and it's mostly because as much as I loved that show, even though I somehow conveniently always forget that last episode. Um, <laughs> every character on that show, at some point, I went from either I started out loving them and I hated them by the end, or I started out hating them and I ended up loving them by the end, or you had ones that kind of flip-flopped where, you know, it's just like, I want to choke them out. The next one, you love them. I loved Adama consistently throughout the whole thing. He was the only character that no matter what happened, even if he was doing uh, just kind of a, 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 a kind of a morally ambiguous thing, I always liked him, and I always thought that he was doing what he thought was was correct. So, uh, out of all the the fictitious captains, um, I would definitely say uh, Adama. Agreed. Yeah, it's a, a good it's, one. It's helped by the fact that Edward James Olmos, as an actor, is one of the coolest people that's ever lived. Agree. Uh, in my estimation, so. Yeah. Okay, I'm writing down this because I have to watch these things. You guys are giving me things to watch. <laughs> have you seen Battlestar Galactica, Alicia? A little, but it's not very as good. much as the it's others. Worth watching. It's a very good show. I okay. just, I just, some, I, someone had put like compiled a list of um, like show bibles that were either for for the TV TV nerds mm -hmm. out there. Like there's like this is the document that it often gets written before the show gets written. So it's like you can hand to new writers. You can like you can sometimes it gets handed to people who are pitching. Um, yeah. just to, and um, the the one I, I was reading the one for Battlestar and it's, it is fun. It's like just kind of explaining the world and how, what the rules are and you know what kind of stories they're telling and who t who like how they, it's it's so good. It's so good. I maybe cool. want to go back and start from the beginning. Um, I'll watch yeah. it. If it's sci-fi, I'm going to love it because I was heartbroken with the way that I apologize for my voice. I lost my voice. So you guys are going to be getting this sexy, raspy, scratchy voice <laughs> the entire episode. Too bad. Um, <laughs> Apology accepted. <laughs> Um, because I was like so heartbroken when Stargate uh, Universe, when Stargate went away, I was like, how could you do this to me? 
So I lost a lot of trust in like certain science fiction franchises. Like you guys can just up and pick up when you want. No, you can't. But they did, you know, with like left, left us like hanging. So, that, you know, I, but I, I will check it out. I promise. Cause they didn't leave you guys hanging. They had a good resolution to the show. They, they had a resolution. They had, okay. <laughs> up until that last episode, the show is awesome. Yes. <laughs> Show's awesome. Okay. It doesn't do a Game of Thrones where it's a whole bad last two and a half seasons. No, it's just they su- compressed it all into one really bad. You can wipe it out of your brain episode. Yeah. And actually, <laughs> that, last season, it <laughs> that last season, like, it, I will, I argue, like, I think it dips a little bit in quality, like, toward, like, you know, five, six of the way through, but then it has an amazing like resurgence of energy. Well, yeah. And they especially a dime like, strikes like, were going on. So stuff yeah. was just getting consistency was going weird in, in the middle. Cause they were doing those half seasons. Cause yeah. that was when we had like the writer's oh, strike. Yeah, yeah. Everybody okay. came back for like well, half a season. And then we had another writer's strike. And that was like in the middle of uh, that whole series. Yeah. But yeah, but especially Adama and Edward James almost his finest hour is in those last few episodes. Oh god, yeah, incredible. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I so gotta it just watch sort it of too. came together. Dang. But no, it was it, like I said, Saul. Like I started off absolutely hating oh, Saul, yeah. and by the end, it's like Saul's the greatest that ever yeah. lived. <laughs> Did you see that actor? It's so sad. He like had a terrible fall and like it suffered bra- like like horrific brain injury. Or, like oh, a horrific brain injury. Oh, like, I did were, see that. The cast was trying Ooh. to raise money for him because he was like, it was just like oh. it, was, it was like right in the middle of the pandemic too because it was and he was like all alone with his wife and he just fell and it was apparently like, out of blue, out of the blue. Um, yeah, That's horrible. Sad. Okay, he's wonder like a wonderful, wonderful like character actor who got her like a great part in that in that show and it, yeah. yeah, Canadian, mm-hmm. Canadian. Yeah. I'll um, take the recommendation, but I will remember in order who said it was good. Because if it's bad, I'm going to come beat each one of your asses <laughs> in order. Fair. Of who said it. <laughs> I remember. Okay. It is a long it's show, a- so we will have wasted quite a good deal of your time if we're wrong. So I, I <laughs> People have done that to me. They've been recommending some garbage. But, I mean, I, I trust you guys, though. I do trust you guys. And I have to give you my captain. Or you're yeah, not, please. You're not gonna- please. Okay. You know who I'm going to say. Why is this surprising to any of you? Janeway? I knew you were going to say it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I know the Star Trek captain thing is hot button issue. I'm probably going to have people like telling me to kill myself and DMs and stuff like that. (laughs) What's going to happen? Do that. (laughs) that? Jeez. (laughs) People go crazy. But if you think about, you know, Kate Mulgrew, I, I like how she sort of, you know, she came in and she had some big, humongous shoes to fit into. And I was like, I was, I was like, there's no one I'm going to love in this world more than Picard. There's no one to, ooh, who's this? <laughs> I love how she came in with a completely different vibe. She did not try to replicate uh, uh, original. She did not freaking shatter. She didn't try to replicate Picard. She became her own person and she did it so well. I love it. She'd be like, you're not allowed to talk to my crew. I love how she said that. <laughs> Listen, that's a this good is my crew. Pretty, it's a pretty that's really good. good. Yeah. <laughs> she's, uh, she's, she's a diva. <laughs> yeah, she's she's great. And Kate Mulgrew yeah. also was in uh, one of my favorite movies, which we covered on my movie podcast, Franchise Fan Guys, recently, Adventures of Remo Williams. Adventure, oh. Remo Williams' Adventure Begins. She was the love interest in that movie. She was great. And that movie I loved love its theme her. song. It sure did. It was good. It was a good every, theme song. Every 75 seconds, that theme song. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <true. laughs> it's like, we got to use this. This is amazing. We paid for this. Um, Matthew, I just uh, realized, um, can I say a fictional one really quick? That's my favorite. Yes. And it's apropos of nothing and don't even think about it when I say it. Please say it with as much time as you desire. Oh, okay. I just would say mm, off the top of my head, not because you're the GM. I think Krez Coletha is probably like my favorite oh. fictional oh, captain. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> That it that the best part of that is I did get to live out the the, the dream of mine of being a starship captain on that show. So that was and you so were great. You. you were great as a captain. I mean, that's what I mean about uh, the role of a captain. You really have to like fill the shoes, like you said, Alicia. It's like you got to have the the chutzpah, you know. Mm, I like that's that. hard. That's a, that's a tough. It's a tough role to play well. Yeah, and yeah, yeah it's Matthew did a did a great job. Pressure Go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's still well, like, you're still all gonna die tonight. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna work. You're, you're all not still in a very dangerous one. situation. Doesn't buy you anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite, or at least my like the one I want to talk about for a minute is um, 
I, I, I want to, uh, <laughs> you know, continue to praise the uh, questionable 90s sci-fi that on which I grew up, but uh, Captain Bridger from Sequest DSV, played oh by God. legend Roy Scheider. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, okay. I did. I did really love him because you know what I like. I liked about him is that he was. I just liked that, like the concept of him was so great. He was this like he like warrior, right? He was like a storied warrior who had like captain all these ships and had done all these things and was like the foremost captain of this of this navy in this like in this intense time, and yet. In the between that time and the beginning of the show, he had grown to like inherently distrust the military, and he just like fundamentally did not like did not like the military, and had come back for a variety of reasons. But like it was such an interesting thing where he was it was con that constant like push pull of his instincts were the mil like the the military commander, but he wanted to be like the scientist like the scientific the, the explorer. Starfleet. He yeah. wanted to be the Picard, but like you could tell like he like his, his like first instincts were often to be. Like I was a captain on a ship in a time of war and like, and, but it was, it, anyway, it was obviously of questionable quality. Okay. As All right. I, that I, is a, <laughs> was a terrible I, show, I but you made a strong dolphin, case. man. That was cool. Yeah. The dolphin was great. It had this little hamster tunnel throughout the ship. That it, yeah. He could go wherever he wanted on the ship. He, captain Bridger designed that ship. I got to watch this show. They had a dolphin in space. No, yeah. they no, were, they a, were, a no, it's underwater. It was oh, a oh, yeah. submarine. Okay. <laughs> Like, with, wow, it's a weird a show. You <laughs> yeah. And the dolphin could talk. They had the technology. The dolphin could talk. Right. Okay. It's like Congo, but underwater. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> speaking of <laughs> ship captains and Roy Scheider and dolphins, uh, the woman, uh, one of my favorite movies is 2010, uh, the sequel to 2001, which is far inferior, but I still loved it growing up. And my, one of my, my mom's best friend's sister-in-law played Roy Scheider's wife in that oh. movie and in that movie if anyone remembers i think i think i'm the only one maybe who ever saw it but uh he had dolphins like that would swim into his house like at his home like roy shatter's character and so the she came over one night and had dinner with us and our family and i pestered this poor woman the entire night with questions about roy shatter and dolphins <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Last Roy Scheider bit, and then we get to the show. Oh, I just, gosh. I just heard a like I saw a clip of Steven Spielberg talking about casting Jaws, and apparently, he was at a party, and he was, and he got introduced to Roy Scheider, and he was complaining to him that they were having trouble casting Brody in Jaws, and he was saying like, "We're seeing all these actors who either want a million dollars, and they're not going to spend a million dollars for me." Because at that point, he wasn't like you know, wasn't Spielberg. He's like, "They're not going to spend a million dollars for me." Yeah, just done like Duel was the only thing he'd. Wow. Right. at that point yeah and it was like anyone who doesn't want a million dollars is just like not that interesting and then like they were just talking about it, and then he just went what are you doing this summer <laughs> and that's how we got cast just i was wow. hoping to say that roy shredder rode in on a dolphin i do keep dolphins in my house <laughs> <Let's> command <laughs> over dolphins sign them up <laughs> well all right well anyway thank you for indulging that those are all good answers all good answers great yeah. great, great, great question great the Topic. Yeah. I well, was pleasantly surprised. Speaking of ships, captains, and ah. dolphins, and space, which were all at one point mentioned in the past 20 minutes, uh, <laughs> when last we met our ragtag band of spacefaring adventurers, the crew of the Kate's Gambit had undertaken a highly confidential mission at the behest of the Chief of Naval Intelligence himself, Admiral Gage. They were to locate and commandeer the ISS Ellison, this famous ghost ship, a naval vessel that was actually a heavily armed warship designed to stay in near constant jump, completely cut off from the universe until the Emperor, you know, on a whim, could command them to annihilate a world. And they had to t find and take control of the ship between two rival Imperial client worlds, Klorth and Nodra, found the ship and used its armament to turn their centuries-long Cold War hot. However, when the Kate's Gambit arrived at the designated coordinates, they first found no ship at all. Until the Ellison suddenly appeared dead astern, not derelict, not a ghost ship, but fully operational. So they forged documents detailing their mission and were received on the Ellison to meet with the officers, apparently the original crew that was allegedly lost 73 years ago. And when they tried to explain the situation, they found that all available evidence, both computer evidence, astronomical evidence, physical evidence, all pointed to the fact that they were not in their present time, but 73 years earlier. Even their own ship suggested the same. 
but thanks to a stunning display of legal knowledge from Puffer, they were, however, able to convince the commanding officer of the Elson, the acting captain, Lieutenant Commander Yang, of their legitimacy, at least for the moment, and she allowed them access to the ship, though she assigned the tactical officer, Sub-Lieutenant Hale Volman, to accompany them wherever they went. However, while they were poring over these sensor logs that they were trying to understand just what had been going on, a member of the crew, a young steward, crewman Katie Finn, arrived to deliver some refreshments, and Gigi was able to draw out a piece of information that acting Captain Yang had uh, neglected to share. That the, the captain of the vessel, not the acting captain, but the original captain, had been killed by someone named Hemt. So what do you, before we get into that revelation, what do you guys think is going on here? Like, what are the theories? What are the, what's the prevailing theory? I've been thinking about it and I have no idea. <laughs> Great. Other theory. Than, <laughs> Great theory. Other yeah. than it's like it's an it's an alternate past that mm. we've been draw, like oh uh, maybe like the the us being drawn into this past has changed our present their future so that none of the stuff in our ship is provides enough evidence gives them any evidence that we came from the future. It's like it changed that just the fact of our appearance here changed everything. Yeah, like but, like, uh, like we're in some sort of like pocket universe timeline. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm just talking to my butt, really. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we do. <laughs> Skid, that's really interesting. The idea that it's like we changed it somehow, like we accidentally altered. Because in my mind, I was more thinking what you were thinking Seth that there's almost like a bubble you know like the opposite of a black hole but like mm. a weird expanding bubble of frozen time that we've somehow intersected and once you intersect it you are in the time that the bubble was in there's no like jump in time it's just now you're stuck there um, but the jump drives is what's getting me because they're like yeah we had the issue with the jump drives and for all oh. Artemis's knowledge that doesn't affect time travel so yeah that's, that's a good it. piece of information that you know that they they mentioned there was a missed jump and now the jump drive is now not operational and they're they're very the crew the officers on the crew as, you, as far as you can tell are very very concerned about their mission and their mission is to stay in jump space and they currently have had to spare to they currently had to spend this time repairing the jump drive and they currently still having to you know stay in normal space you guys it's think it's aliens uh, maybe. Is <laughs> <laughs> it aliens? There are aliens. Never mind. Um, but could be. But it's also it's an like, experimental. Like they're over you, bitch aliens. <laughs> yeah. Because I really don't want to get face hugged. I no. Don't. <laughs> no xenomorphs. Don't put that out there. <laughs> yeah. Don't give him any suggestions. He's writing this as we go. Don't I let him do that. Anything oh, no. no. <laughs> I mean, it's the thing is, it, it's also it's an experimental jump drive also, right? Because ordinarily, like, ju you can't stay in constant jump ordinarily, right? So is there I mean, anything? They, they come out of jump, but it's just they, they have a, a very powerful. I think that they're rated at like the tip top with a jump six. Like, like jump would, seven. Yeah. Yeah. I think, it's, I think six is the most I could do in the book. But uh, it, it went to six maybe. and then later it went to hops, which were like only in tens, I think. Like, oh wow! When you get deeper into Mark Miller's universe, like there was jumps of the hops, which were like in increments of ten. Oh, oh wow! Oh. Okay, cool. Because that was my that the only theory I had was that we somehow jumped out of jump, and that was all I could think of. Like when we ended up with them, and then I thought about the fact that back home. So that means back home we're both missing for seventy three years now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we're currently in the Whoa. past or there in the present. Either. Well, because yeah. if you remember their footage or whatever of the ship that caught them was like two days ago, right. and for right. us that yeah. was like two months or something. So, uh, I really wish I had invested a long term investment before we left because I, I, know. Think, <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of interest by the time we get back. Yeah. Um, but one of the other one of the things I am curious about, um, and I forgot who had mentioned this last one, the the crew. I would like to see photos of what they looked like when they started their mission versus right now to see if 
do they are are, are they aging weird or or what? Um, because I want to know if we're all going to start withering soon. Yeah. Um, or if we try to jump and we like expire into a pile of bones. Oh, you know. Oh no. Like, yeah. Yeah. We have to figure out what happens before we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking realistically. You guys are in fantasy world. I'm thinking we try to jump. <laughs> we die. <laughs> All right. So all great yeah. theory. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear the conversation. Thanks for letting me in on that. Mm. <laughs> but right now, crewman, uh, crewman Katie Finn is standing there, kind of pouring your tea, and uh, you c- you can tell by the expression on her face that she maybe wasn't supposed to say what she just said. Oh, I, I like that we just had that entire know. conversation in front of her. <laughs> yeah. right. She's pouring tea <laughs> verbatim. <Yeah. laughs> um. Um, well, so she can tell that um, that we're sort of well that Gigi's sort of like oh so we were beginning to get some of the information but we got distracted by um, a few things can you reiterate exactly what happened again that oh, sort of um, I, I'm not I'm not really supposed to, to tell you uh, to say anything uh, oh uh, shit um, I'm sorry I have to go and she uh, just kind of makes for the door who wants to tackle her first? <laughs> I don't think I'm there. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not there either. Oh, you're not you there? All, I think you all were. You all, you all were there kind of because oh, okay. you all need that. I thought that we all were in the logs. Room. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You all went to the bridge at one point, but then you came back to the ward room to kind of work mm-hmm. out, to look through things. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Artemis um, blocks the door yeah. casually. Casually. <laughs> um, so, so Puffer would like to... Um, use persuade but through the angle of we are the people who the Imperium has put in charge of solving this sort of thing of uh, so you know uh, you know crewman by the, by the by the order of the Emperor we uh, we have been sent to find out what is going on if there is information that is being held from us we need to be aware of that so okay. for your Emperor, First, who the hell is him? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so persuade. Which do I want to use education or social for that? I feel like you're the, you're just you're trying to kind of impress upon her the like the weight of the situations. So I might say social. Yeah, that's... unless you make a case for education because you want to use it. Well, I mean, just because I'm really smart and I've got a really low social, uh, but that's like my entire group. <laughs> I mean, maybe, you, maybe you, you could, ju- you could, you're like whipping out a bunch of legal terminology to support. You're like, you know. <laughs> well, let's see. oh fuck, it doesn't matter. Um, so, <laughs> okay. If we're going by social, I got a three, and if we're going by education, I got a four. So it didn't really make it. She's, right. like, I, she's like, I, I'm sorry. The, the, I'm under direct orders from the from the captain. No less. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. I I can't. And she, she starts to turn to go. The emperor will hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, are you? What are you eating? <laughs> what are you eating, Puffer? I don't know. She Some wants tea? tea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Artemis right. at the door uh, says, "Katie, right." Um, uh, yes, crewman, crewman Finn. Oh, so sorry, uh, Addy is soldier. Um, who, who do you have waiting back home? I'm just curious because, you know, we just, we just came from, where are you from? We, my point is, if you've really been gone this long, like we know that you have, if you're trying to reach somebody on the outside, we could we could help you do that. I mean, we're here to help. We're here to bring you back. We're supposed to bring the ship back, but obviously, you know, you're on the ship. I'm just saying, we're not bad people, you know. We, what do you mean gone this long? We've been only been at, we've only been out two months. Hey, you were not at the meeting on the bridge when we first came in, were you? No, I was in the galley. You're oh. in the galley. Wait, how long? Wait, what? What are you talking about? Oh, Katie, you don't want to. You, you know never what? seen aliens. 
<laughs> God. You know, it's, uh, oh, well, that's classified information that we're not supposed to tell you from the Imperial. Oh, what? Mm, oh, <laughs> you could tell me what you know, and I could tell you what I know. Roll persuade. Mm. Yeah. All right, what do good I got? Good one. Good one. Okay. You can't roll worse than me. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I set the bar real low. <laughs> That's uh, gonna be an eight. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. She leans in and she says, "Okay, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But Hemt, crewman Hemt, in engineering. The story is apparently after the mist jump." They were they were working on the jump drive, and she, you know, she went to do something. I don't know. I'm not an engineer, and uh, she almost killed Lieutenant Damon. And the captain himself came down to engineering to try to save the lieutenant, and then him, I don't know, hit the wrong button. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how. I, I'm just. I'm just a cook, and apparently, she just straight up killed the captain. Sorry, by pressing a button? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not an engineer. I'm sorry. I wasn't there. I don't. I, no, no, no. I, 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 of course, of course. But I mean, the captain's body is here. No, we know the cause of death. No. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it, it, it's here. I, I don't know where they're keeping it, but it's, oh, that's, that's a, oh, I, don't, I don't even want to think about it really. But yeah, it's like she did something and they don't, they haven't really told us. They just said, you know, it was an accident and the captain was dead. Of course, of, of course. It, it was was it was probably. And I'm an engineer. It was probably an accident. Accidents happen all the time. Where's Hemp? That's the thing. They arrested her. She's in the brig. So clearly, like some of the scuttlebutt is, did she do it on purpose? Like why did she like why did she do it? Like, do you like do you like Hemp? She, she seems fine. I don't know. I don't. I, you know, I, I I serve food. I I, 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 I normally I just you know I. Um, normally I work the wardroom, so I don't interact with the, the crew as much, but, you know, she, we don't bunk together, but, you know, I know her. There's only so many of us on board. Oh, oh so She was, takes a cracker and shoves it in her mouth. Thank you. This? Sorry, what did you say, Seth? How, how long ago did this happen? Uh, uh, five days ago. Um, did, uh, how was it explained to the rest of the, of the crew, or is everyone aware of what happened? They said there was an accident. It was a, Captain Yang, uh, you know, she said there was an accident. The officers addressed us all, and they said there was an accident in engineering, and that uh, and that Captain Montgomery, he, he died. That's all they said, really. But, you know, word gets around, and we know who was there, and we know. And Lieutenant Damon was in medbay for, for like a day, and then he, he seems okay, because he's now, he's back in engineering, apparently, trying to work on the repair. Um, uh, how long ago did the ship records see that other ship that that we know was from our time? How many days ago was that? I I want to. I'm just. I'm not, I'm not asking her. I'm just like. I know I'm you're long? asking me, and I can't remember what I told you because <laughs> I think I, I think I changed it in my notes. Um, okay, I'm just trying to say, like, was that? Five days. That or so they three that, days. They, the ship, the the pleasure craft that recorded the video. That was would have been after, after this, after the death of the captain. Okay. Okay. You know the other the other thing that's crazy, and she's like, I mean, Captain Yang. I mean, she knows what she's doing, and I, obviously she knows the ship. I, I, obviously, but you know. Uh, I mean, she's only, she was only XO for about, you know, what, a week and a half before this? You, you it's, ever it's just, and now she's in charge. It's just, it's kind of, I mean, I trust her. She, I mean, obviously, I, I follow orders. I don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I follow the orders. I, you know, serve, I'm here to serve the emperor. But, well, no, kinda, it, she wouldn't have been XO if she was not qualified. But. No, yeah, no. And she came with, apparently, she's like super duper high clearance whatever i don't know but you know yeah it was uh, i got it she i got to believe it's this kind of scary you know this kind of thing it's very 
it's just very scary. And we're on, you're on, we're, we, we're trusting each other on this boat, right? Like we're a crew. We've been together. We like, we're on this, the, our mission is so important and so important to the, the, the whole Imperium. And yet, and then, no. Yeah. It's, you understand, it's like you're you work for the Emperor. Mm -hmm. Of course. We've all got like purple and blue hair. <laughs> um, anyway, I've said too much. Wait, I've said too much. Now you, you said what? Where, what? You said all this time had passed. What happened? Uh, well, according Shoving crackers in my mouth. To, yeah, Artemis <laughs> also has like four crackers in her mouth. According to the the um records that we have, uh, <laughs> they're dead. The, um, well, okay, between you and me, Katie. Can I call you Katie? Captain, uh, <laughs> uh, Ch uh, Chief oh, Petty Officer, uh, sorry, you Kermit. were the crewman. <laughs> uh, ahem. Sent by the Imperium because the ship, the Elysian, has been missing for uh, about 70 years. So. 70 years? Shh, Katie. Something this like is between. that. Give or take. She shouts at full life. 70 years. <laughs> Just a uh, yeah, they they call the, the ship like a, what? A, they call the ship a ghost ship. We were literally supposed to just scuttle it back. It it was a we we thought it was a hull. We thought there was no one on it. Uh, we're just as shocked as you are. And um, also between you and me, it sounds like there's a lot more going on within your crew. And I mean, if you know anything about anything going she's, on, she's starting to cry. Go on. Oh God, she, oh, no. she's crying. You you did Good receive tissue. a hero's funeral, oh. but no one no one knew about it. But funeral. I oh, she's crying more. I can't. I Philo, someone, Gigi. I can't look. It's I can't. a joke. It's all I, an elaborate uh, prank, ill conceived uh, and cruel as it may be. Why would you joke it's about something just, like that? Just I know it's oh, it's, it's space funny. madness is what it is. We've got <laughs> space madness. And one of the <laughs> symptoms is it makes you do cruel and poorly planned out pranks. And I'm so sorry that you caught the brunt of it. I mean, we've really got to get some shore leave, if you know what I mean. So sorry about that. No, you're all, you've only been, you it's whatever year you think it is. Don't worry about any of that. Whatever year I think it is. <laughs> Did you right. make these biscuits yourself? <laughs> Can I like do some sort of like sleep hold on her? There's gotta be something we can do. Do we figure out what we need to do? Okay, <laughs> well, let's so first amazing. resolve. Uh, we are losing Philo's, ground. Philo's attempt to convince her it's space madness. Do you want to roll deception? Okay, I'm gonna try yeah. a deception. See, I can't hear space madness without hearing Rin, Rin and Stimpy doing you know, space oh, yeah. madness. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of Futurama. It's like space madness is no call for space rudeness. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna try a social check for the for that. Uh, that is a seven. Okay, she's like she's she doesn't know what to believe. She doesn't quite think you're telling the truth about this the prank, but also she's just like she's so confused right now. <laughs> Good. Mission accomplished. Nice. I, I got to get back. I'm sorry. I've got to get back to my duties. Uh, Crewman, uh, dude, uh, uh, are the are the pudding vats still full on this ship? Is <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, actually, we do have a steady supply of pudding. Um, what kind of pudding do you like? This is good information for me to have, actually. She snaps into steward, steward mode. <laughs> um, if, if you could bring me some, some chocolate pudding, I'd be very grateful. She like her probably want to bring more than one, even though they're all going to say that I'm the only one that likes pudding. But <laughs> just bring, bring as many as you have. Bring two just for Gigi. Glitter. Just say they're mine, and she'll love them. <laughs> just bring him whatever Chocolate you have. Pudding. It's Captain Montgomery's favorite. Oh no! I oh well, she's not eating in it, so that's <laughs> for, <laughs> there's no demand on the ship except for Puffer. So. <laughs> Sorry. She's, now she's just kind of horrified and she, she, she leaves the room. But please don't tell anyone about the amazing prank. They might get jealous. Oh. <laughs> yes, everyone will think you're insane. So keep can, that to yourself in the galley. Can we go over the game plan? Also, I get violently ill when people cry. Um, oh, are we not telling them the truth? I thought, Puffer, I thought you were trying to prove that. I, 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 I forgot they didn't know. Um... 
So we. What's our the, What's our plan? What's our plan? Good question. I still want to send some probes out yep. uh, to do it. However, I don't know if we can trust what the probes sent back since our own information. I mean, this engraved serial numbers on engine parts changed. So, but uh, but I also want to send them out to see if they vanish or or, or what happens to them. Do you think we could put... Uh, 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 something that dissolves on them, something that like uh, a radioactive isotope or something, we can measure how much it dissolved or, or mm. s- something else to see if we send it out for an hour and bring it back. Is it going to have like little micrometeor strikes on it? Because from its point of view, it was out there for 80 years and oh man, I got a cat at home, somebody needs to feed. But, uh, <laughs> But we also need to check out these uh, the jump drives and everything. That was uh, we were planning on, on Artemis checking the astrogation charts, so we haven't not done that yet. I'm more than ever interested in what's going on in engineering. It sounds extremely confusing. I mean, no. Uh, I want to see this jump drive like bad, but I also want to send out some probes and just. Yeah. If we can get them out to a certain distance and they vanish and then we pull them back and they've been gone for a year mm-hmm. and we can prove that somehow we can at least find an edge to our bubble. Um, but also we have no way of judging if the uh, uh, ships from those two planets are going to show up. Um, yeah. I think it also might do us some good to take a look at any personnel files if anyone's better computers than I am and take a look yeah. to see what the f- files say and uh, if they've been altered at all would be good to know too I promise we don't I can't I, well I, I can't tell timeline being altered because my own computer updated I'm on I'm, I'm on Windows 95 man <laughs> 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 can you imagine like hell? being on like, the latest rig and it like, all, it, all it, 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 suddenly it, it, starts, just starts running Windows 95 right. <laughs> <laughs> no. that would be also really Clippy horrifying. pops up like oh, yeah. no. <laughs> do you need help finding something <laughs> are you stuck in a time bubble <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please right. Clippy we're begging you right. so it sounds like you have three you want to look at the personnel files you want to send out the probes, and you want to go to engineering to check out what's going on there. Yep. Yeah, um, so, Sub Lieutenant Volman, you know he's going to be coming back in, you know, twenty minutes. Like this was we, we spent you basically we'll, you've spent hours going over the logs, and now you know we'll, he'll take you to work to do the probes. He already you already talked to him about that, um, and he he can I'm, he probably could pull up the personnel files for you, or you could try to do that on your own if you wanted to try to like hack into the, the ship systems, or um, and I, and he would be and he can escort you to engineering. Um, but you have a few minutes if you want to try to hack. I'm not saying you should, but you could. Hacking can take a long time uh, to do, like like hours upon hours, but. Is there a data port, or can I? Is there they invented there, Wi-Fi yet? There's displays all around, <laughs> and then there's, de- there's definitely you know an input um, an input panel that you could use. You could use it. Whether or not you could get access is the question. Okay. Maybe we could do it under the guise of doing something else. Um, for the records, does anybody have admin? No. Did anybody learn admin that one well, time? We have jack of oh. all trades, but <laughs> I have animals. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will work. That will work. Also acceptable. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let me let me uh, see if uh, let me just test out this computer system. Let's see what we got. Great. Uh, so yeah, give me a computer's role. Um, okay. Using it, you could use education or intelligence, depending on what you what you feel. Uh, well, they're they're, they're going to be the same either way. Um, Great. I have, oh. uh, and I'll have you roll. Best. Depending on how you roll, I'll have you roll for how how much time it takes. Okay, I have. Uh, so my 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 computer armor has uh, can run a program, uh, whatever. So, uh, 
Let's see, I've got a decryptor and a security, which no, that's security for me. Uh, so I might need the decryptor. So I will load that on and see what happens. So you're gonna use, you're gonna like R2D2 um, yourself and, and, into and this. Also, <laughs> well, I can do also do, um, I'm trying to read my own handwriting. I, I write like a drunk child. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, do intrude or something. <laughs> Intrusion. That's it. I can't okay. read. Great. Oh, thank God. That's so much better. Um, I got an eight. So can I at least, if I can't get in, can I gauge about how long this might take me if when we bunk down for the night or? Yeah. So you don't get in because this was going to be a very difficult check. Um, okay. Because you got a break, even though they're seventy-three-year-old codes, they're still, you know, the the the, the best imperial decryption encryption process known, you know, known then. It's still pretty difficult. Got to um, get best clippy. Yeah, you get the best <laughs> clippy. Um, but you would you could you would guess that it would probably take you about four hours to, to get to break it. Okay. I'll, with I'll an average that. with an average check. I'll, I'll pass that to them and say, okay, so this evening. Once we get into rooms, hopefully, um, let's let's crack her open and see what we find, right. and also maybe okay. give ourselves clearance to open the freaking doors. Okay. Um, okay. And then Sub Lieutenant Volman comes back, uh, and he's like, "Oh, good, you got the refreshments. I wanted to make sure you all were fed and and watered." Um, okay. Um, so I, you know, I took. I'm sorry I had to leave you, uh, but I took care of a few things, and I'm, you know, we are. I'm willing to do what you need. So where, where to? Does my pudding come here? <laughs> pudding? Oh, uh, did you order some pudding? Uh, yeah, still yeah. waiting pudding, for pudding. pudding. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> In the Emperor's name, we demand pudding for puffing. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me. Let me he like he like slaps the PA. And he's like, all hands, all hands, please. please the in general all quarters, hands. the alarm goes off. Just, we just open a spigot in the wall oh, and just. <laughs> Ooh, with pudding spigot. That's that feels like an upgrade pudding. you should pay for on the uh, Kate's Gambit eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, <my> God. <laughs> okay. Um. I want to mention I lied, though. I do have admin. Oh, great. I just realized I was looking at the wrong character sheet for her, because I have two, but the updated one, I have one in admin. Okay, so we will we will use it. Maybe Gigi was distracted and wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's for so, later. Sub-Lieutenant Volman is a tactical officer, so actually he would um, he can coordinate the launching of the probes if you want to go with him. Um, he'll, okay. you know, he can He goes down, you know, he, um, he, you back to the bridge. He, you know, relieves the, the, the crew person sitting at the tactical station. And he's like, I'll do this myself and you can do it. You, you're welcome to supervise. Like, he's like, I don't, you know, I don't want to hide anything as, you know, I think I can do, I, I know the ship, I can do it fairly fast. Um, oh, I, I will see if, if there is enough space on the probe and if we have, uh, some sort of isotope or something, um, just a perfect recorders. I, I'm trying to measure time dilation. Uh, I gotta get the captain's agency. permission to for that, but I, I don't see why not. And, uh, excuse me, captain. Uh, and the captain says, "Yes, yes. How can I help?" Uh, captain, what um, uh, the, the reason that, that that I'm asking for the probes is our suspicion is that we that there is some sort of time dilation uh, field. So if we can send some probes out in multiple directions, you know, across the different planes with uh, a, a radioactive isotope or and also recorders constantly going that we can measure if we bring them back in three hours, if three hours passed on the probes versus us. So that's uh, since I don't trust the computers, I would like to also try uh, different means. Uh, to see if any of them ring the bells that the times do not line the way they should. So, but evidently we need permission to get to the, the radioactive locker. I understand that's uh, bad pranks happen if you let that open to the whole crew. So we just, we just need some. And the captain listens thoughtfully and then she turns to Volman and she's like, what do you think? And they just like, they have this highly technical discussion about the various, various possible radioactive isotopes they can use. And you get the sense that actually the captain has a fairly, just a depth of knowledge about 
she's not just like she's not just like a not just in the command department right she actually has a depth of scientific knowledge as well um and they also they, they she agrees that's a good idea uh yes we'll make that we can make that happen and so the suffice it they they Volman assigns a couple of crew, crew people to handle that. They they put on, they put on their vac suits. They'll do, they're going to do that, uh, and then they, you launch the probes. Um, okay, great. Um, well, and he turns around and he's like, "That was fun, right? Oh, <laughs> love launching probes." Um, <laughs> should we? Uh, uh, where where'd you, where'd you next? <laughs> Engineering. I need to see the jump drives. And he uh, he casts a glance over at the captain, and she. Uh, she gives him a nod, and he, so he leads you down. All right, so I get to go back to my 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 uh, my mapping out of the decks here. So Ooh. the ward room was on deck three. You descended to deck four. I'm um, deck deck one is uh, dorsal, and deck eleven is ventral. Uh, so top to bottom, uh, and you're gonna go down. To, you went down to deck four to go to the bridge, and then now you're going to uh, deck. You actually go into deck six, so the, basically the whole aft section, decks five and six, is all engineering. Um, but so you're going to the 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 entrance, so so to speak, is on deck six. Uh, so you know you descend, you know Volman leads you down, you know around the corridors, tight turn, down another set of stairs, another set of stairs, takes you down to deck six, and he goes, all right. Um, engineering is obviously highly classified. The the technology on the ship is uh, top of the line, uh, and so I, you know you can't touch anything. So please, you know, the people are working here. This is an active repair situation, so please um, just keep your hands where you can see them. I, you know what I mean. Okay, uh, and he uh, he scans himself into engineering, and we open up. And let me turn to that page in my notes. Uh, yeah, so engineering is big. Uh, like ca- it's this cavernous two-deck space with catwalks lining the circumference and stairways and ladders connecting multiple levels. Uh, you, you're easily a dozen power plants are powering the massive jump drive and maneuvering drive. Now at the mo- m- moment, the maneuvering drive is lit up and operational, but the jump drive is dark. You're shut down completely. And about a dozen crew are currently dis- like dismantling it. Um, and supervising them is Lieutenant Damon, who you met in the war room. He was the one, um, he was, he was friendly uh, but kind of uh, tall with a big terrific sweep of dark hair on his head uh, and he was the one who you got the feeling like he uh, wasn't quite he's one of those people who wasn't quite aware of how much space they take up like they're bi- kind of a big human but not exactly uh, you know not not aware of what they do not super self-aware of his <laughs> yes presence and he see and you know he sees and he's the you. one that almost almost got killed too right yeah yes by him yes that's what uh that's what you heard from uh, from Katie Finn, right? Okay. Um, Artemis. Uh, okay. Let's uh dig in, and she's going back to like college brain of trying to like assess. It's almost like you know, there's a classroom here. Like people are solving a problem, and she was really good in school. Um. And she's trying to get back into this mode of seeing the forest for the trees. Um, so I guess maybe, I don't know. Uh, she wants to talk to um, Damon, but she also wants to first like observe what's going on. But initially, like, can I tell anything about the jump drive? Like, they're just totally dismantling it. But you'd have to you'd have to get up and examine it. To do. Okay. But I'd allow you if you wanted to get talk your way into it. I'd allow you a check, but from here you just see like they're taking pieces, taking it apart, and trying to. Uh, I think she goes up and she says, uh, "Excuse me, uh, L- Lieutenant Damon." He sees you. Oh, hi. Hey. Uh, sorry. We're this is uh, <laughs> we're, we're 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 working on a repair right now. Uh, but uh, how can I help? Hi. Hey. And she's just like doing his exact body, like try <laughs> you know try to make him comfortable with uh, reverse psychology. Um, and she says, I uh, I wanted to take a peek down here. Um, I'm actually an astrogator myself and I, I went to school for it. Space Rutgers, I don't know if you know it. it um, <laughs> but uh, graduated uh, top of my class. Um, I just thought maybe I could be some help. You know, I, I, 
I know a thing or two about jump drives. I, I man the one on my ship, and I've done plenty of repairs. Uh, you know, really MacGyvered myself some parts. You know, chewing gum and uh, paper clips. So uh, maybe, I, maybe I could help you guys out. Just wanted to offer my hands. Uh, that's super generous. Uh, I'm sorry. I obviously, I, the cap, I would captain would never approve me allowing a civilian to work on the on the drive. But you know, I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have if that's helpful. Of course. I mean, I'm not a civilian. I have the uh, complete approval by the emperor. But that being said, uh, yeah, I do have a question. Well, shoot, what, let me know. What went wrong with the drive that caused Hempt to uh, press whatever button they pressed? You heard about that already, huh? Listen, Hempt, you can't blame her. You can't. She's a, you know, she's a good... She, she's a good, solid, reliable, you know, member of my team. I, you can't blame her for what happened. You really can't. Okay. I'm mean, like, I'm going to, I'm happy to testify to who, whatever, whatever, whatever court martial or whatever is going to happen. I'm happy to, you know, you know, I, I'll be there in her, you know, in her, in, to support her because it's really can't blame her for what hey, happened. Hey, I don't know Hemp from Eve. I was just wondering what's wrong with the jump drive. That's what we're trying to find out. So okay, you you heard uh, you heard me about the, the miss jump. Um, well, after that, and I mean, you can't you, you know you, it's sometimes you don't want to ruffle feathers, right? So you, I said, why? You know what we'll do? We'll do a full level one diagnostic on the jump drive just to make sure it wasn't the commander Wilkes's. You know, it wasn't any of his people's fault. Like we want, I, just, I thought it would be the nice thing to do, right? It's like the, the, the responsible thing to do, run the diagnostic, make sure it was human error. Like eliminate all other possibilities like they teach you at the academy, right? So yeah, so we were running the level one diagnostic and I was like, I'll do it myself, right? I'll do it myself. So I was down, I was up in, you know, I, I climbed down into the, into the access panel beneath the floor right over there and he points and there's like, they pulled up the floor panels and there's like a, it was a Jeffrey's tube if you're a Star Trek fan. Like, <laughs> so he like to, to get it to get access to underneath the jump drive. As so I was down there, and uh, I, 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 crewman uh, Hemt uh, got a little overzealous, and she recycled the uh, the fuel tanks. Uh, I had, was currently working on the jump drive, released a bunch of vapor straight into my face. Uh, you know, luckily I had, you know, I was able to eventually, uh, you know, I got, I, I, I well, really it was the captain got down there and put my, like, the captain got down there in the Jeffrey's tube with me. Whatever. I'm going to keep saying Jeffrey's tube, all right? <laughs> I'm, Yay! Got in there in the Jeffrey's tube with me and he, he put my, he put my mask on and saved my life. But, uh, uh, yeah, and then, well, Hemt was... You know, she was trying to fix the problem and she activated uh, uh, the, the suction mechanic and it basically just sucked all the oxygen out of the tube and the captain suffocated. Orin. He gave me he gave me his own he gave me his own like he gave me his own mask and I, I mean it was I woke up with him on top of me. It was, that is a. Uh... Yeah, I'm so it's, it's sorry. It's a truly tragic situation, like freak accident, and I, I feel I, I feel awful for him. To, you know, quite, quite an error. Uh, I don't know why they put those buttons next to each other. Well, I was about to say <laughs> the um, <laughs> she didn't. The controls are <laughs> that's not quite so simple. <laughs> <The> controls <laughs> are bad design. It sounds like I, controls are on entirely different panels. But um, <laughs> how many parsecs? were you trying to jump? What's your drive? Six? We have a, we have a, a jump six, yeah. And how many parsecs was your miss jump? What were, where, what were you doing? We didn't end up that, as, as far as I know, we didn't end up that far off. Uh, you know, it was, you know, couple, you know, you know, a couple million kilometers, basically, but it was, you know, enough of a miss jump. It was, luckily, we were okay. Um, but, you And know. this was your first jump? No, no, we've made many jumps before that. And it was just, you know. And where were you before you jumped? I, I mean, that's that's classified. I can. Of t course, I it is. Of course, it is. But, L Lieutenant Damon, um, as J Drive engineer myself, uh, how? What were your injuries being in 
you're basically getting blasted in the face with the hydrogen fuel and then the suction and the captain's body. I, you seem to be pretty well. Your hair looks great. I'm trying a new thing. I borrowed a product from, uh, uh, from you know, from uh, <laughs> I borrowed, borrowed from Plax, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's going with it. Maybe it's time distortion. Uh, it was, but, but, but yeah, I do want to ask about that. And if I can, uh, so I do have medic one. Yep. To, to just kind of like, based off his story, does shouldn't I would imagine that he would have a like, burns. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. They, 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 he's got all his fingers and toes and his all nose and his ears. Toes. He's uh, fine. It was the the cool, the fuel wasn't super cool at the time, so he was like he didn't. It wasn't like a liquid nitrogen blast. Um, he will show you the giant bump on his like on his back, the back of his head from where the panel like the panel popped out and whacked him. That's what knocked him unconscious. Uh, the vapors would have probably killed him, like they would have oh. poisoned him had he not had the. But he he didn't ultimately you know he didn't inhale enough to die. Um, oh, so he doesn't necessarily even know. He's taking other people's word for what happened then, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Interesting. Well, if you ask, do you ask him that? Yeah. Hey, uh, sorry. If you said you were knocked unconscious, but then you said that the captain saved your life and gave you his mask. Uh, if you were unconscious, how do you know that's what happened? I mean, I, I woke up wearing his mask. Right. And you woke up to the captain dead and hemmed in the brig. No, you didn't have any knowledge in between those events. I mean, I, 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 I guess you're right. I, uh, well, you know, but I, I trust, you know, they briefed me, they, like they told, they told me what happened. Sorry, Captain. Captain, Captain Yang and Doc, Doc told me what happened. And, you know, Hem, I heard, I read Hemp's account too. You know, she, there was a report. Um, I read the report and clearly, you know, she wasn't like, Hemp isn't trying to lie. You know, she's very, she's, you know, she volunt like she admitted what happened. It's, it's right. just, okay. Okay. I just, yeah, just curious. Um, I'd like to recon and see about the cameras in and the rooms, but I'm not going to ask about it. This is what I would like to check the um, computer files for before I voice that to. Okay. And I would, I would like to use my electronics or astrogation now that I'm up close to the J drive to just try to see like. Point, looking at what he was pointing out and looking at the panel and saying like, oh, you know, she flushed the fuel and. And just trying to see if that like order of events actually makes sense. You want to basically like, check a story? Um, yeah. Okay. I would. He will. He'll like. He can. He'll. He'll walk you over to the drive. He can also pull up the pull up the diagnostic on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. And you can look at it. Um, let's roll your recon first, and then uh, roll engineering J drive. Let's resolve the recon first, Seth. What you get? What'd you get? 11. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it's well, there's, you, you, you would assume, and then you can, you detect, you see the, the lenses. There's plenty of cameras around here. Oh, yeah, because every time they're like, what's going on in engineering? They always just turn to the closest wall. They're like, well, Captain, this is going on. So I figured like there's got to be like cameras everywhere. Yeah. And what'd you roll um, on your J drive? 11. Can I add two for my education? Yeah. I mean, it's a, that would be an 13. End. Okay, yeah. So he, he, his story checks out. Like, it looks like exactly what he said happened. And whatever damage was caused, whatever damage has rendered the drive inoperational right now, was caused not by the missed jump, but it's physical damage. They're, and they're basically, they have to do like a full strip down to, to get to, to, I, to fix it. I think um, Artemis whispers to Puffer, like, as they're kind of looking at stuff, she just says, I think they sabotaged it on purpose. Mm -hmm. Everything adds up. And she turns back to Damon and goes, Lieutenant, uh, I just want to say thank you. Quick question. One more Do you thing. believe... Uh, one more thing. thing. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. <laughs> Do you... And this is silly. You know, I just thought about it a lot in my um, collegiate years. But d do you believe in string theory? takes a deep breath and we'll find out what he says after this break <laughs> <laughs> yes 
says Lieutenant Damon. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it. Say? About string theory, he just says yes. He believes in string theory. Great. I'm glad we covered that. Uh, it's so dramatic. Such a such a, such a book hanger leading <laughs> up to that. <laughs> I, I wish was I knew what the ads like, I'm were. I'm really Scott Bakula from Quantum Leap. And you'd be like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> I also happen to read the Bible for Quantum Leap, which is one of one, one of my favorite shows. That was oh, a, me too. That was great. That was the Bible. Uh, yeah. It was interesting the way they. It, that one was more of like if you're pitching to us because this was like in the day of like you would pitch to get on the show or you would send spec scripts and it was like we like like this kind of they had a fun way of explaining like how they liked the kinds of stories they like to tell. Anyway, regardless. Yes, Lieutenant Damon believes in string theory, <laughs> Artemis. Uh, great. Um, yeah, it was just like a harebrained theory I had about, uh, you know, mishaps and misjumps that go on and sort of the creation of alternate, you know, timelines or, or dimensions that can happen due to, due to major jump mishaps, which was um, my, my thesis, but uh, obviously unimportant in this situation. And thanks so much for taking the time. I have to go. Oh, your thesis. <clears throat> I'd love to huh? read it sometime. I burned it. Why did you do that? <laughs> what? Um, I was embarrassed, mostly. It's it's really, again, unimportant. It was all about uh, J drives and, and just the, the idea. Um, you know what? You're busy. Um, no, I, I, I'm I can interested. Talk. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Uh, I think he's sitting on, on you. Oh, that's not what I thought was happening. <laughs> oh, interesting. I'll try. Maybe he's a, a professor. Maybe he taught a college, like a <laughs> magnet class or something. My, I turn around like this. Were you possibly? <laughs> what? Were you? <laughs> were you by chance a professor? <laughs> Did you ever teach at oh. a community college? <laughs> it doesn't matter I'm where. There, there. He goes. He goes, he goes. Why? Is that what you're into? <laughs> no, he doesn't say Lieutenant, that. <laughs> Lieutenant Damon! In he front says, of the crewman? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roll, roll a social check. Oh, no. No, this no. isn't going to go well. Uh, all right, what's my social? Right, minus one, of course. There we oh, go. Not looking. Oof. Oh. <laughs> or. Oh, even no. With that, even with that roll, you can tell he's definitely hitting on you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know it for a fact in my bones. And I'm like, Lieutenant Damon, I would love to uh, discuss my thesis more uh, over a cup of coffee. Um, just not around all these people. Oh, no. Um, I, 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 would, I would love that. I would love that. Buffer is um, finding something really interesting to look at. <laughs> 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 I'm also trying to create a distraction. <laughs> I'm creating a distraction for you guys. Uh, my shift is up in. Oh, he checks it. Uh, it's three hours. So uh, I don't know if you want to meet me. Uh, tell you what, I'm not gonna lie. I, I make a pretty good cup of coffee myself. So why don't we go meet me at the galley? I'm friends with I'm friends with a bunch of the bunch of the crew there. You meet the galley, and then I have some. I, there, there's a, there's a spot on the ship that has a truly spectacular view and I'll, and you and I we sit there we'll, we'll set up some chairs and we'll stand there and we'll talk about your thesis I love Alicia's Alicia's just going <laughs> further from the screen like, like, what is going on this turned into like Melville's place <laughs> um, Artemis is like that honestly sounds perfect three hours I'll, I'll, I'll be in the galley I'll, um, I'll keep myself busy till then I'll, I'll keep out of your hair are you taking Until one for the team? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> oh, I'm taking one for the team. Oh, I'm taking one for the team. All right. Yeah. One what? Um, he's, There's he's, no romance like ship romance. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> he doesn't seem to have a lot of game, but he is like gamely trying. Yeah. Yeah. If it goes really he, well, you could get legally married. There is a ship captain involved. Can the ship captain legally marry? They are dangerous. Sure. Wow. Yeah. Such has been the rights of, of captains of ships at sea for time yeah. immemorial. Gigi. Skid is now quoting Star Trek. Gigi, <laughs> you see, I'm scared of you. You see, uh, Artemis is like you know patting her hair down in the back, and she's giving you signals that we have used before. 
when we're out at bars together where it's like I'm not actually interested you know I'm just gonna use this person you know it's like oh I'm gonna get a drink I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that so she's kind of letting you know like okay from afar I'm not like flirting with this guy like he has information and she's giving you sort of like these sign language high signs what kind of uh, bars do you guys go to <laughs> crazy <laughs> Crazy ones. <laughs> the, it's the, our standard hand signal for I'm not actually flirting. I'm, I'm working this guy for some confidential information. This is a very <laughs> complex system of hand communication. We go, we go to a lot of dangerous bars. A girl's got to watch her back. <laughs> Great. At, at, at Ren Fair for years, the code was if, if, if she does that, that is the somebody rescue me from this conversation oh, oh, wow. as yes. fast as possible. So yes. they... So like all of a sudden like you usually be like the biggest guy we had be like oh hey you know just like kind of like get them out of there because it was the like that was the distress call of <laughs> wow really good to know there's a there's a thing at bars you're suddenly too thinking where... of all the women that have like yeah kind of... I was like I wonder <laughs> <laughs> like, well, all I the all the conversations at Ren Fairs, I bet yeah. I, it, it was it was for both sexes because it either could be the creepier flirter or it could be I am trapped in the worst conversation of my life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the variety of creepers that you'll find at a Ren Fair rivals that of any other situation on Earth. So, a little, little concentrate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're uh, my people. I love them. But yeah. Oh, yeah. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're great. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. It's me, well. That was it. So, yeah, she, she leaves it at that. She kind of walks back towards the group. Okay. Did we all um, go to engineering together? Yeah, you all went together. Oh, I, oh, I, I didn't know awesome. that. I didn't Sorry. know that. I thought yeah. that it was upstairs. <laughs> yeah, I did too. <laughs> Volman is trying to keep you together as much as possible. Okay. Oh, that's why I didn't even, I was just like, ooh, watching like I was listening in, but I wasn't really there. Do you understand? <laughs> Same. Let's, all right. That's fair. Okay. Let's go back and redo the whole scene. Okay. <laughs> that's all me. Fine, no. We got it. We got it. <laughs> no. Artemis, you handled it, girl. <laughs> I'm on it. Uh, yeah, so in my time, that's what I did while everybody's doing their thing. Okay. okay. Great. Um, okay, where do you want to go now? Uh, the, the only other things I'd like to do here is, like, just based off my uh, J-Drive and electronics and all of that, uh, I want to just kind of see how many jump drives are on this ship at, if if I'm like, okay, these are probably J6 drives. Are there more than this ship would be? Like, what's the power requirements uh, of this? Like, I basically, like, is there some weird, uh, weird, yeah, something weird like, We have 20 times more power plants than we need, people, or or something that just seems different. Than go normal. ahead and ro- go ahead and roll engineering J drive, or en- or if you have engineering power plants, you can roll that too. Um, I've, well, I've got G drive, uh, so my power plant is zero. J drive is one. Um, if it's J drive, it's a nine. If it's power plants, it's an eight. I mean, there, you you wouldn't necessarily you know you wouldn't necessarily lay things out this way, and you know there's a more efficient, probably more efficient way to to use the power plants. But based on your understanding of seventy year old ship design, nothing seems out of place. Okay. Do we know um, what their refueling procedure is? Are, are, do they meet other like refueling ships at like pre-designated rendezvous points and to, they, to, to refuel them or what? They they can uh, mostly they have uh, they do same as you would on the Kate's Gambit gas giants. Um, they don't tend to descend to worlds to pick up you know to use the water refinement. Uh, but they, yeah, they'll go to it. They go to gas giants. They have, you know, state of what were state of the art collection, you know, modules and they have massive fuel drives so they can collect a lot at once. Okay. Um, yeah. and stay in jump for stay, you know, from go from jump to jump for a while. Right. Okay. So, uh, Artemis has a date with Lieutenant Damon in a couple <laughs> hours. Oh my gosh. Uh, what do you want to do in the meantime? Anyone else you want to talk to? Um, Hemp, right? Don't we want to? I mean, Gigi, you have social. You should talk to Hemp. Yeah. 
I, I actually oddly want to um, see if I can get um, a few minutes with the captain before I visit you. Oh. I don't know if that's something I want to announce to Damon or anyone, but I would love to see if, you know, the captain has a minute. Yeah, so maybe you, you want to go back to the wardroom and then... If that's, I mean, I don't know if the captain's back in their quarters. I just didn't want to break whatever was happening um, yeah. to announce that I wanted to talk to the captain, but I would love to get a moment of, just a moment, the time. Um, so maybe, you, so maybe you, you head back to the wardroom and from there oh, you... Bef- before sorry. I do that, I, since we were all together in engineering, I want to like sort of... I don't know, pull um, Artemis aside and um, say something like, um, yeah, so I don't know what's going on, but um, I think you may be onto something with maybe some of this isn't like a mistake. But if that's the case, we have to be really careful with the questions we ask and the things we say. Because if we get too close to a truth that we're not supposed to know, we're going to find ourselves, what, melted in a Jeffrey's tube or whatever. Next. No, you're right. right. Good, cool. No, you're, you're, com- you're completely right. Also, hey, huddle up, team. Mm. I just want to say. Yeah. I have to go on this date later, <clears throat> Lieutenant Damon. And I know how ridiculous that sounds. Believe me, me of all people, I know. What's but if he has something to do with him and the captain, if he's in on it. I mean, I'm going to be extra careful and I'm just going to smile and, and, and feed him, hoping to get a little something in return of sustenance. But I mean, yeah, anything, anything can happen. I, I don't, I don't know this. I don't know him, you know? Yeah. You're definitely, you're definitely putting yourself in, in, in the line of fire w- with this, especially if he does know something that he's not letting on. Um, so uh, I-, I wouldn't say bring Philo or Puffer on your date, because I don't think Damon would appreciate that, but maybe Awkward. there's a way that they're not too far away. Maybe you could double. Maybe Puffer, if you could endear yourself to someone else on the crew and suggest, it's like, oh, perhaps all four of us could take a look at the ship. Yeah, I'm or like actually, Puffer. I'm, Puffer, I'm, you I'm and Gigi. I'm really impressed with his level of game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's trying to match it. It's not too outrageous that you guys might be in the galley at the same time, but keep your distance. You know, like we're not, this is not a spy mission. Uh, no, no, yeah. no. I, and we know it, where you're it's going. It's totally believable. Yeah, I'd go yeah. back to the galley to refill the pudding. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely believable. And then, Gigi, I mean, like, maybe Katie would be there, and maybe you could try oh. to get another lead from Katie. She seemed to really like you. Was she, was she cute? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, she, she was, she was um, honestly, she was kind of plain, and she seemed okay. really Sorry. nervous. But she's... How? Dare you? <laughs> I think you, I think you described her as plain, didn't you? <laughs> I would never. I don't, know. I don't recall uh, that descriptor being used at all. But uh. sorry, she had brown hair and okay. a memorable face that I okay. simply can't recall at the moment. <laughs> nice teeth. Um, nice teeth. A, a wonderful confused. smile. Yeah, good personality. Okay. I was say, all he described as her personality. So yeah, that's, yeah, I just wrote dog on my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Loyal, friendly. <laughs> um, All right. Maybe we could do it. Let's have sort of a patrol where we could like work out a schedule where we keep one of us. He will be in close proximity to the two of them, like over the course of the entire date. Just like look like we're doing other stuff, but like one of us will always be, you know, walking I, I, by or like. In the I think if we just monitor the exits we don't even have to be in there uh, he's he's not gonna do something in the galley but that's if he's all like hey let's go off to this spot that's got a great view that's that's where things could happen where right. she suddenly ends up in like a steel room with shackles <laughs> with them what do you know so um buffer in a rubber <laughs> suit no just kidding <laughs> no no I'm, I, I think he's nothing. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. So when do we get up I to leave? 
When we get up to leave. <laughs> no, he had the same exact experience. When you, got my, from- you got my back, all right? When we get up to leave, you guys, you know, keep your distance and, and monitor where we go. That's all I'm saying, all right? Yeah. I can handle myself. We'll but- keep no, 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 distance. Worried. I'm, I'm, I'm looking out for him. <laughs> gotcha. I'm not going to kill him, Puffer. I'm not going to kill him on his own <laughs> ship. You could. <laughs> Get him onto no. our ship, and then we murder. Yeah, we were yeah. there one time. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you don't talk about that. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Gigi wants a word with the captain. So maybe you go down to the wardroom. Are you? Do you want to just like a solo word with the two of you? You want you want to have the captain sit with all four of you. Yeah, I, I want it to be like uh, you know, sort of. Hey, captain, you got a minute? That kind of thing. All right, so you go down to the uh, room, and maybe you get on the. You can. You have a. You. You page the bridge, and you see, and the captain gets in the comms. It's like, yeah, y- yes. It's, How can I help you? It's Georgina from uh, V Kate's Gambit. I was wondering if you uh, had a quick minute. Just wanted to clarify a few things that me and my, uh, you know, crewmates are trying to figure out. Maybe you can help me just a little bit. Is if Gigi Lieutenant wants not to be able to, sorry, alone, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was say, if Gigi wants to be alone, I might try to use the excuse of, hey, let's go check out those probes. She's with a captain. She's fine. And try to get the rest yeah. of us away. Mm. Okay. Okay. Great. So you, yeah. maybe you, okay. maybe you take Volman. Volman takes you off to, to go the pro, to go check on the probes. And okay. uh, yeah, she, uh, Lieutenant Volman's not available? Uh, yeah, I mean, I... I don't know, it's just, um, oh, let me ask you something as a DM first. Um, she, she, does she know that we know about the former captain at all? I, as far as you know, no. This is, this is, this is, um... Tell you what, okay, I, okay, I'll be, okay, uh, I think I know I'm just coming up a watch. Uh, okay. Meet me at my quarters, they're actually, uh, not far from the wardroom at all. If, uh, can I, if I can find the document with the deck plan on it, um... Okay. Yes. The officers' quarters are actually on the same deck as the war room. Just deck. make a left. Make a left out the door and you'll see it's the that way. All right. All right, I really, I really appreciate it. Really quick, just real quick. That's all. Just uh, you know. So then she's going, Gigi's just gonna find her her quarters and knock or ping on the door or whatever has to happen. You knock on the door, nothing happens. Yes. After a minute the captain comes around the corner and she's like, Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm, you, you no problem. Closer. Um, oh, wait, come in, yeah. come in. And she unlocks the door and you uh, you go into her quarters. Um, okay. The first thing you notice is that uh, this is not, these are not the captain's quarters. She's still in the executive officer uh, quarters. She's oh. in her bedroom instead of, she didn't take the captain, like the dead captain's suite. She, uh, oh. She's still in her. Uh, it's small. There's a, a, you know, a narrow bed. Uh, a desk with a lamp uh, and you know lockers so you can stow things away for during space flight um, it's impeccably neat and impeccably organized wow it, everything looks good in here it's uh you you're really uh you're really neat you keep everything looking good <laughs> uh, thank you uh, do you have any do you have any water in here or something like that uh, she wants to distract her. She keep looking around. <laughs> there is a, there is a, the ex, the exos quarters do uh, have a bathroom. If you wanted to, uh, like, if she's like, oh yes, the bathroom's right there. But, the, but feel feel free. Oh, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, Gigi's just gonna run to the bathroom and close the door. Are there any? Is there anything in the? I don't know uh, cabinets or anything. She can just quickly like flush the toilet, whatever they call it. And start looking through things while she's in there. <laughs> okay, a roll Before. recon. <laughs> <laughs> this is re- recon. Do I have recon? No. Could have it, been that time. Yeah. Jack of all trades. Yeah. Oh yay! One. Eight. Mm. Eight. Uh, she uses. I'm sorry to say. She brings her own toilet paper on space on space flights and uses <laughs> double ply oh, instead of wow. the standard issue single that ply. Way. That's so smart. What a diva! Yeah, I mean, if you were <laughs> if you were deep <laughs> spacer, you everything. would know that that's a little bit She's of like, a, a little bit of a Hollywood uh, <laughs> okay. tendency. She's a little bit of a diva. So that's her, okay. But as far as you can tell, that is her single indulgence. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> For one massive vice. <laughs> one massive vice is double-ply toilet paper. Luxurious toilet paper. 
She picks up a giant toilet that. brush. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So do I. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. that's mine too. Um, <laughs> otherwise, nothing remarkable. You know. Nothing. That's all the standard issue stuff. All right. She just looks around and nosily flush the toilet again. <laughs> no fun. No out. fun medications to steal. Nothing. 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 Oh come on. <laughs> yeah, there's got to be something. She comes out something. and she's like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just take the he's like take the ibuprofen just because. Yeah, <laughs> gotta gotta just gotta take, take it. A, gotta make it worth Sticky it. fingers. Yeah. You notice know, there's like an empty pudding cup <laughs> container in the trash, just like this. <laughs> she comes out of the bathroom and she's like, uh, you know, uh, it's gotta be really hard being a captain of, of a ship this big and kind of be, keeping control of this many people. Uh, uh, I appreciate the challenge. Yeah, um, how, how long have you been a captain just in general, like, ranked like this? Ah, so you've been talking to the crew? Um, no, I was just wondering in general, like, have you been, like, what, were you, like, is this your first time? Is this for being the, being the first, or, you know, did you go from, you know, number two to number one? I mean... I filed my report with High Command. I'm sure they'll send a replacement captain soon enough. But until such time, you and the others will have to accept my authority, same as the crew. I oh, apologize no, I mean, if I'm not the captain you wanted. Oh no, I, 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 I mean, I, I'm, I barely know you. Uh, for my purposes, the reason why I'm talking to you is, uh, I kind of, I kind of want to get where you are. I want to be a captain of my own ship one day. I want to have crew and people reporting to me. Now listen, right now, the captain of our little crew is the one with the blue hair, Artemis. She's sort of bossy and she's sort of like getting in my nerves a little bit. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the only way that I can do what she's doing on our ship is to figure out how to get her out of the way. Now, I'm not saying you know anything about that or anybody knows anything about that. But I do know that people don't get to the top by being nice guys. And I wanted to talk to somebody who's at the top like you. Are you insinuating that I murdered <laughs> Captain Montgomery? <laughs> Who? Who's Captain Montgomery? Wait, what? You come off it. You know quite well who Captain Montgomery is. The name sounds familiar, but I don't know any Captain Montgomery. I'm asking you as the running captain of this ship. And that's why I wanted to talk to you kind of woman, a woman. I'm, I'm kind of young, but I have dreams. You know what I mean? I didn't come on this ship and on this mission because I wanted to be sitting in someone's bathroom, checking out their garbage can and toilet bowl. <laughs> What? Just at my garbage can. You're looking at my garbage. I just happened to glance at them when I was at the toilet. <laughs> I was I'm drinking sorry. out of the sink. Yeah, yeah. I was taking a drink like out of your Like many faucet. of the officers and crew of the Ellison, I too like pudding cups. <laughs> I like to have it. Sometimes I like to have one after a walk before bed. Does that make <laughs> And I, I, if you want my advice, I would suggest not to murder anybody. Just is that, that your advice not not to murder anybody? It but, sounds but like you want to murder your crewmate. <laughs> okay, if I, okay. So number one, if I don't murder anybody, what what are some things I can do to like move myself ahead and uh, sort of you know? Uh, yeah, but I mean, just look. This this doesn't go. Right, yes. Turn off Fair your enough. comms. Turn off your cameras. This doesn't go any further than you and me. Cameras. <laughs> um. All right. Well. Um. What kind of um, advanced degrees do you have? I don't got none, but I'm a quick learner. I'm a quick learner, and I and look, I got drive. <laughs> that's what, that's it. Here, here, look, look at my character sheet. Look, so you, you 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 haven't you you didn't go to university. Wow, well, here's my story, and Gigi's gonna literally sit down on like the couch, like she's about to like, you know, just spill her whole life story across like it with a cup of water from the toilet. The captain's like, I didn't see that All right, so you sit down and you tell her the whole story. And the, and the captain at first is very resistant, but by the end of it, she's like, 
and he just ran off <laughs> with the six-breasted woman. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it broke my heart. It killed me. It destroyed my my whole life and my trajectory. You know, I was I was on the upward climb. I had things I was doing. Look at me. I had things I was doing. I was going to become something. And then that dude did me in. So, I end up on this ship. I end up doing a lot of things. I end up working for people. I know a lot of people. I did a lot of things. I learned a lot. But I've never gotten to reach my full potential. It's always because people get in my way. And I just want to know how people like you, who I admire and look up to, and are doing real things in this world, like captain of an entire naval ship, naval warship, ghost ship, is getting where they get. Because I have no one else I can talk to but that blue-haired chick who's in my way. <laughs> well, again, I, I highly recommend not murdering the people ahead of you, but <laughs> she's off. <laughs> if anyone wants to know why we broke up, <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about Puffer. Just kidding. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the world of Beatrol? Am I gonna what? Have you ever heard of the world of Beatrol? I haven't. It's a, no reason you should. It's a distant world, new world, colony. I was. I, it's where I grew up practically by myself with no other children but I, I, I had my dream was to attend the Naval Academy I uh, wanted to be a I, wa I, I too wanted to be a ship's captain uh, but uh, and I worked hard and distinguished myself in school I got top marks and everything and I applied uh, and I didn't get in and I found out later that the uh, the sector administrator who was to have needed to issue the stamp of approval for my uh, application to go to the academy uh, just didn't okay. ran out of he was busy he didn't bother to even open the file and I just I just can't abide that kind of incompetence can you it's just it's the studious disregard. I mean, I went to a very good school. I went to Space MIT. Um, <laughs> but... I went to DeVry, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> Space DeVry, oh, really? Oh, oh, regular DeVry. <laughs> Couldn't even get into Space DeVry. <laughs> uh, it's just... Yep. There are people in this world who hold you back. They don't hold you back because they have any ill will or malice toward you. They hold you back because they just don't care about anything but their own convenience. Can't abide by that. If you want to be captain, you have to care. You have to care about everyone, every member of your crew, every circuit, every wire, every bit of piece of equipment to care about it all. You can't just assume everything will go all right. You have to be there and you have to ensure that everything goes to plan. Let me ask you a question. Yes. What if I'm on a ship and the person who's in charge isn't showing that they're up for the job and I know it? Well, they won't be in charge for very much longer. Eventually, competence wins out. I'm, I not, by the way, I'm not advocating you murder anybody. <laughs> That's not what I mean. It's they'll Once eventually lose, lose their job. <laughs> I'll write that down. I appreciate your time, Captain. But I have one quick question for you before I leave you to your um, pudding pops. I earned my place on this ship. I may not have been here at the original launch, but I earned my place. That's what you I, should, I basically You should know with your records that you should see my, my work on the design of this ship and the design of this mission. Oh, I didn't... Wow! You designed this whole mission, too? I'm part of a team, obviously, not not just me. Yeah. I'm part of a larger yeah. team. But, but I, worked hard, I worked hard and I paid my dues and when when the Admiral signed me to the ship and as a last minute replacement for their XO, I, I I left my life behind to join this mission because I believed in it. Because I knew they need if they need they needed someone in that position to ensure that everything was going well. Well they they definitely picked the right person. But Going back to, to what you mentioned earlier with uh, Captain Montgomery, you said? Yes. 
such so, a fine, um, fine man, a fine man and a splendid officer. You don't have to tell me anything about what happened because, you know, personally, I don't think that affects me at all. But um, you, uh, how, how did you assume the position? How, how were you in line for that? Like, how did... I was the I, executive officer. I was next, the chain of oh. command is clear. No matter how new I was on the ship, I was still next in line. No, I'm sure Lieutenant like Commander Wilkes would prefer would have preferred otherwise, but regulations are clear. It sounds like you have the respect of the ship and everyone on it, and you seem to know what you're doing and you know what's happening on this ship. And I think that's important. Thank you. Thank Leave you for saying that. Well, me and my crew, we're going to try to figure out what happened here, but... uh, Do you want to roll carouse? I mean, you're not drinking, but maybe you're sharing a pudding uh, cup. Hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's just see how, Dang like, it. obviously she's I opened wrote. up to you some, but let's see how, like, mechanically, how, how well let's you... Let's see. Oh, six. Oh, wait, no, I can add. Mm. Social. Social. Uh, it still puts me at a seven. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're not besties, but yeah. she did open yeah. up to you and, you know, you can she tell did. you probably, there's probably, yeah. you know, a road here if you ever she's, needed to. She's a, okay. All um, right. Well, um, I mean, uh, you don't have to tell me what happened to Montgomery because I know this, that's probably classified information, even though it was probably traumatic for the whole ship. Well, it's a matter of, it would, I mean, everything on the ship is classified, but you'll know soon enough, uh, when you read the reports, um, it was a terrible accident. And she basically describes for you exactly okay. what Lieutenant Damon describes. Okay, and did she tell me about Kemp and everything? Yeah, she tells you exactly, you know, the, the same story here. Like, they okay, were, everything. They were, they, okay. they were doing a repair work and, you know, voluntary diagnostic, and then Hemp basically was too overeager and recycled the tanks, and then the captain went down to save Lieutenant Damon and was killed. All right. Um, do I... I don't really have a, I have a really good... But I... Can I sense any, since I have a little bit of sword, can I sense anything is untrue? Or she's like, there's some sort of lie detector yeah. test. Is there like a sense motive <laughs> equivalent in, uh, in oh, travel? Yeah. Home? She's a, I mean, um, she's a people person. I want to see if she can feel like she's leaving something off or. The, the closest that, that I found is actually basically a deception versus their deception. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, roll deception. Come on, man. Oh, that was sweet. And I'll roll as well. Eight. Okay, and she rolls uh, a 10. Um, <sighs> but like, I... Okay. I mean, you wouldn't know that. You, yeah. you yeah. And I think you wouldn't, you don't get the sense at all that she's lying. She's, you know, she, right. she tells you the facts. Like she doesn't editorialize the way Lieutenant Damon did. Like she just tells you the facts and... Right. Know, she's be, you know, the report has been filed, you know, with high command. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, Captain. Um, oh, we're just gonna we're gonna try to figure out what's going on here, and we're gonna make sure that we get out of your hair and uh, we we'll stay out of your hair while doing it. Do you oh. mind if I talk to him at all, just to see? I mean, oh. I'm trying to talk to everybody. That's what I'm doing. So yeah, you uh, guys, yes. of course, okay. I'll, I'll I'll leave word with Lieutenant Volman to escort you to the brig. Um, you know, I, okay. I, I believe this is uh, sleeping hours for uh, okay. the brig, but uh, you know. First thing tomorrow. That's great. And uh, uh, this space swill is great too. Swill. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's space papst. <laughs> space papst. Space papst. All right, as we leave that scene, robot. let's oh, let's, nice. let's say that um, Puffer, you're with, uh, you, you and Volman go to uh, check the probes mm -hmm. and then uh, Artemis, you're going to meet uh, oh. Lieutenant Damon for your date at the end. And Philo, are you going to check the probes, or are you going to kind of go to the galley and I would be like the one to, on shift? I'd like to carouse with with uh, Commander Wilkes if I can. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you want to go meet Commander Wilkes somewhere? Yeah. Like if there's a ten forward or something where people oh. meet off duty, like I'd like to go and and carouse. And, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so he'll be off duty shortly. Um, so in the meantime, uh, okay. Um, Once I'm done, I want to go back to like 
watch it where Artemis is from a distance to follow. So just I will be keeping that in mind. It was like, oh, I'm putting emergency. Right. <laughs> Standard <laughs> putting emergency. <laughs> All right. Shenanigans. Let's, Code Brown. This let's is start with <laughs> Artemis. <laughs> That's something else. That's yeah. something else. Yeah, that yeah, you say. That's problem. two meetings. In space. People get out of your way when you scream "Code Brown" and charge That's down true. the hall. That is true. <laughs> I imagine that is one hundred percent true. I just assumed it was because they understood my pudding need. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's start with uh, Artemis and Lieutenant Damon in the galley, and then we'll we'll we'll, well I'll move back and forth as necessary. So yeah. So you meet where do you do you go down and meet Lieutenant Damon? Yeah, and I think Artemis has freshened up as much as one can when they are being <laughs> held captive on a a ship. Uh, not and they, captive. She, Can't leave. She, she's like washed her neck with soap to make herself smell good, you know, as if she was applying <laughs> perfume in the area. She's like rubbing soap. I uh, asked the, the spacer's bath. Right. Yes. <laughs> the old the Irish spring method. Uh, and uh, she kind of walks in and, you know, like as you do at a bar, like kind of stops and looks around the, ga- the galley. <laughs> the crew members who are there off duty are, are like, they all, stop talking and stare at you. They're all, like I said, like there's, a, there's kind of an atmosphere for here that they're all very intense. Mm-hmm. Like there's like, a, they're very serious about their work and their mission. And so like, obviously they're a crew. Um, roll recon. Okay. Do I have? Okay. Mm, do I add anything to recon? Uh, you could do intellect, unless you want to make a case for something else. Um, no, I just didn't roll well. Okay, uh, that's a five. Okay, um, you c- only thing I've noticed is you catch a glimpse, uh, kind of like there's a kind of window into the kitchen, like the galley galley, and you're kind of in the, the mess. Yeah, you're mm. meeting in the mess, and they're, they're at the galley. And you see these two crewmen, um, two men, kind of in there who are everyone's kind of looking at you because like they don't get visitors on the ship uh but those two guys are kind of looking at you with a lot a lot of suspicion interesting uh she clocks it sort of out of the corner of her eye and then the other crew members who stop talking uh she kind of like squints towards them and like really wants to be aggressive and like be herself and then she walks over and goes, has anybody seen Lieutenant Damon? I'm supposed to meet him here. They all look at each other like they're not, oh, not sure if they're allowed to talk to you. And then uh, one of them says, he's, um, he's right there. <laughs> oh. And you turn okay. around and he's swept into the room and he's like, he's like, he's like leaning against the doorway and he's like, <laughs> hi. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> uh, she turns around and she also goes, <gasps> Hi! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm she, rooting for him. I it just uh, damn too. Yeah. I like the He's guy. likable. He's gonna be a murderer, like without a Definitely. doubt. Oh, oh, um, totally. Definitely. He's gonna try to wear your skin. But <laughs> for oh, God. she turns she turns back to the other crew members and she goes, Excuse me, I have a date. And then she turns back around and strides over. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, he's like, here, 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 come on. I know, I know, I know the, the like, I know where the, the best coffee machines back here in the galley. And he kind of like sweeps you out of the mess and back into like a, the entrance to the galley, where like the cooks and the supply crew are working. And those two guys uh, are who are like there. You, you don't really know what they're doing. They're kind of, they ser- seem like they work in the supply supply crew. Are just kind of standing there and they're just like staring at you. As he like takes it, he's like still like having a great time and he takes you over the coffee yeah. machine. He's like, I, I, I know, it, I know it's a cliche, space or coffee, it's the worst, but I think I make up, I think I know all the tricks to make it taste pretty good. And you watch him like, <laughs> like barista, two cups of coffee. Um, and those two guys are just staring at you. Uh, yeah, as he's making it, she looks over her shoulder and they're still staring. Yeah. Um, thank you so much wow i actually realized i i haven't had a cup of coffee in a really long time i'm i'm a big fan i just uh uh okay i'm gonna try it okay cheers 
Oh, cheers. <laughs> and um, <laughs> she goes to take a sip, and as soon as she sips it, she goes, oh, and drops the cup <laughs> towards the guys who are staring, like kind of spills it onto the ground and goes, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That was way hotter than I thought it would be. Our machine, I forget, is like lukewarm at best. It's it's kind of janked up, and I, I didn't even realize. And she turns around to the two guys. She goes, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll clean it up. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. You don't have to clean it up. They don't, they look down at the coffee. They're like, and they look back up at you and they don't say a word. And she turns back to Lieutenant Damon and kind of gives him like the, the deer in the headlights doe eyes of like, did I mess up? And she's like, <laughs> Drax, call us, help the lady. Like, get, like, can you clean the coffee up, please? It's uh, No, you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it. And they're like, no, no, sir. We'll clean it up. We'll clean it up. And they they grab a, they, one of them grabs a, a space broom and starts just mopping up his <laughs> mopping she, up um, spilled coffee. She's <laughs> making herself another. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. Let me. I'll I'll do it. He makes oh. you an, he makes you a whole another cup of coffee. He goes through the whole routine again. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm so sorry. I didn't I I I didn't mean to like make them mad at me. Oh, don't worry. Drag some calls. they don't worry about it. Uh, and he uh, he's like, oh, come here, come here. I have a great, great spot. And he leads you, he leads you, like gets to the door of the galley and he's like, come on, come on, I got a great spot. Okay. Uh, and she's also looking for her other crew members because I don't know if they made it to the galley yet, but like he's like really moving <laughs> through the steps and she yeah. wants to take, can I take one more look back at the guys in the kitchen and yeah. do um, like a street wise check? Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, that's gonna be it's gonna be a 10 okay with a 10 you have you get the feeling having served on many many ships and you know of various uh, you know upstandingness that's the word, I don't know what the word I'm looking for it is huh. uh, they look like the guys who you would go to to get the stuff you're not you know you they know where you know they know how to get things if you know what I mean Got you, got you. So Artemis in her actual life would be friends with these guys. Maybe. Interesting. Um, she kind of, as he's leaving, she leans back through the door and like way lower register, way different like approach. She looks at them and she goes, Drax, forgot your name. Uh, Collis. I, oh, Drax, Drax, Collis. Thanks, fellas. And then she winks and walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So you and uh, okay. Let's. So you follow Lieutenant Damon to his spot. Meanwhile, uh, do you uh, Puffer. Let's say let you and you you and Lieutenant Volman go to receive the probes. They've returned. That's you know the number of hours have passed and, since they've gone out. Um, and you're down in the cargo bay which is going to be on deck, on a deck that I will find when I go to the right notes document. There we go. Uh, the cargo bay is gonna be, uh, it's in the aft of deck, uh, decks 10 and 11. The lowest decks on the ship. Oh, no, I'm sorry, decks eight and nine. Sorry, wrong, I read the wrong line. So There's the, nine decks total? There are 11 decks total. 11 decks. Yeah, so decks eight and nine. Um, this is the cargo bay is also where this is. These are the decks where the crew quarters are, um, and oh. the ship's boats are also docked. Their berths are uh, are back. They're basically, their berths are in the cargo bay. Um, so you have a there's a like a big old um, opening, like an opening to space that's you know covered with a, a force field, um, and the probes. Uh, you know they. they Probes have been received. They're, they're, you know, they seal off. They repressurize the chamber, and you and uh, you and the lieutenant go down to examine the data. Um, how do you want to handle this? Do you want to let the lieutenant report back, or do you want to do your own analysis? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of eagerly ask if I can accompany to, to to look at it. I'm not going to assume, but you know, like, do we need to put on like vac suits or radiation suits? And um, give me a Geiger probe. 
He goes, you know what? That's your, uh, where's my head? You're absolutely right. We should put on back suits before we, so yeah, he can lead you to a, a locker room and you can put on back suits so that you're, you know, just in case, you know, whatever's going on. Um, okay. So you're, you're, as you're donning your back suits, meanwhile, uh, we're going to, uh, Philo, we're going to do your carouse. You're going to do, we're going to save your carousing with, with, with Wilkes for now. Um, so just okay. put, put a pin in that for a minute. Okay. Um, Meanwhile, back with Lieutenant Damon and Artemis, he takes you to, it's basically a missile bay. Like he takes you down to deck 10 and goes to one of the missile bays that's currently unloaded. And he opens up the, he opens up the, ba- the missile bay and there's a, there's a window and you basically can, you know, it's a, so you can see what's being, the armaments being loaded in and you have a clear view of the stars. It's just like, it is it is quite beautiful if you're into that kind of thing. Just, see, it's my secret spot. No one knows. No one knows about this view. Well, I mean, I, a couple people know about this view. Uh, but uh, and she no, playfully, she playfully says, "Oh, a couple other people know about this view." Well, I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It, we shouldn't talk about that anyway. Um, would you, well, tell me about your thesis. Tell me, I want, I want to hear about it. Hmm. So it was all about the thesis. I see. I see what you're doing. Oh, it's always the same. I should have known. And uh, she kind of gets a little like dejected, looking out this window. I, he's like, he really doesn't know what he's done wrong. Yeah, uh, it's like, yeah. What? What? <laughs> I thought that's why we were here. She got a uh, mumble. She got a mumbles like. Every pro- every professor that I've had, you know, interested in oh, God. only oh, interested no. in my brain, not interested <laughs> in anything else that I say. My wants, my needs. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I am fully projecting. We just met. We we literally just met. What, what's your What's your name? I keep calling you Lieutenant Damon. Uh, uh, Arturo. Arturo, that's a that's a really nice name. Thank you. It was my uncle's name. Um, my thesis, the basic premise was that during a a misjump, I was studying the idea that of uh, relating to string theory. You could potentially uh, misjump and create certain gravity wells that would then move you into a different uh, alternate dimension is the only way to really describe it. And that's what the scholars say, too, although that's not quite what I meant. Mine was more related to simultaneous dimensions existing on different time planes, if you will. Oh, come it's, on. That's not possible. I know. It's it's conjecture. It's I mean, I, I like the idea that anything is possible, you know? I like that idea, too. Hey. Meanwhile, back at the cargo bay. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay, I wish so, I had my drop board right now. <laughs> oh. Careless whisper right now. <laughs> so... Uh, Buffer's probing's going a lot less interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what do you? Um, what, what should you want to run? Run roll computers. You're in your vac suits. You're you know you're in the, the bay. You you're you've hooked into the probes. Um, um or electronics. So, uh, so there is uh, electronics computers uh, which I have, but there's also the uh, remote ops, which I know is I guess for flying probes, but it's usually probe related. Okay. Uh, so whichever one you yeah, deem yeah, appropriate. No, that's fine. Oh. 11. Oh. Nice. Whoa. Okay. You are able to see that they've been gone. The probes have been gone for what? Three hours was the, was the experiment? Yeah. They have been gone for three hours. The radioactive isotopes also bear out this information. So there's, as far as you can tell, if there's a time bubble, it, you didn't you didn't reach outside of it with these probes. And they like, went pretty far. Then there were three hours on the recording. It's not yeah. like yeah, they came back with three years worth of recording time. Okay, um, it's not a contact situation. Damn, spoilers. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, then I'll say, as I, I tell you what, uh, if we could, why don't we just do another launch and we'll save for 12 hours. Uh, 12 hours. Uh, I'll have to check in with Lieutenant Damon to see what the status of our repairs are. Six hours back. Ah, we don't need to repair these. They look fine. No, no, he's saying, no, no, the repair of the jump drive. We, if, you know, we might be gone and we should, hopefully we'll be gone in 12 hours. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I guess that makes sense. Um, but I think it's really important that we try to see what those probes say before we activate the jump drive. That's actually the whole purpose for this. Is if the if the if the probes come back, everything's cool. I personally will be a lot more confident in, uh, in, the, in the jump drive. Um. Understood. I'll, I'll I'll take it up with the captain. Okay. Um, you have you have asked you do you have um astrogation? Nope. I have <laughs> I have J drive engineer. <laughs> okay. That's about it. Okay. Um, great. Electronics, but okay. Okay. We go back. So he agrees. He'll talk to the captain and he'll do another another probe. But as far as you can tell, I feel like you feel confident that you know. The probe flying at full speed for three, you know hour and a half there, hour and a half back. Like again, you feel confident that it was. There's no time bubble in that area, you know, within yeah. that radius. Uh, meanwhile, back at the missile bay, um, Lieutenant Damon is, and has leaned in a little closer to you, and he's like, "You know, it's we don't get a lot of visitors on the ship, and I know that's the whole design, that's the whole point of the mission, right? And you know, I." You know, I think that people make mistakes because of certain parts of that mission and, you know, it's hard and I, I think we're all just trying to do our best. Um, but uh, I'm so glad that I got to meet you and hear about your theories. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I got to meet you too. I, I hope it wasn't a mistake that we showed up, but, but what, if- what do you mean people make mistakes? Oh, uh, you know, things happen on long voyages. You, you're a, you're a spacer. You, you, you know, you know, you, you, you get close to people. Maybe you sh- shouldn't be close. I don't, I don't want to, I no, I shouldn't. I, I'm sorry. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, suffice it to say, if you're coming here was a mistake, then that is a mistake. I'm glad it happened. Um, you have astrogation, right? Yeah. So he turns to kind of look out the missile bay, like you're kind of you're kind of like leaning side by side over the railing, like you know your arms are touching, uh, maybe. Um, <laughs> roll an astrogation check. You look, okay. you, you you like you turn to look out at the stars too. Oh God. Oh, get it. Oh no. <laughs> Pick us out a winner, Bobby. Oh, space okay. baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you see a gigantic uh, infant slowly turn and look at you. Eleven. Oh. Okay. And roll recon for me as well. Oh, okay. Uh, that's not bad. That's an eight. I could add my education if it has to do with that, but... Yeah, uh, go ahead. Add your education. Ten. Okay. You turn to look out at the stars, out the missile bay. And for a second... For a second, it's like the entire star map just kind of goes, and like for a minute, like the stars are in different places. And because of your astrogation knowledge, you're like, wait a minute, that should, that's, that shouldn't have happened. Um, and we'll see you next week. Oh my God. Oh, we're so no. Date's over. Oh. Oh. Hi, I gotta go. I didn't get my date in. <laughs> we didn't even kiss. I gotta go. I, know. I didn't even get to kiss the guy. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>